most of you probably know me, Canis Center uh, 1LW. And um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, new concepts that we'd like to introduce you to. Uh, last time I uh, spoke, I don't know some of you might have been here, we spoke about uh, packet radio in general, uh, the future of packet radio, and then so I uh, did a bit of an introduction into high speed um, packet data. So let's call it packet data for now. Yeah. There's uh, a bunch of hands in America that uh, started playing with some uh, of the wireless the Wi Fi technology and started looking at how they can integrate it into amateur radio. So uh, we'll uh, get the uh, slides up and I can give you a bit of a presentation of what, we, uh, what, we, what we're starting in, uh, to play with here in Auckland and where we're at. And um, if there's guys interested, Right, so first of all, the guys in America, when they started out, they started out, they called it the HSMN Mesh, which stands for High Speed Multimedia Mesh Network. And um, pretty much what this is, is Wi Fi equipment that gets networked together to form a superhighway where you can stream all sorts of data and so forth. And um, especially in the States, it started growing extremely quickly. Since then, there's a lot of confusion about what the network does, what it is, what it's all about. So they've renamed it now. You can still find it if you use Google for HSM Mesh. That'll come up as broadband Panic, or also known now as the abbreviation for a BBHN, uh, which is just to say that it's a broadband system. And a lot more people probably understand it than broadband, meaning we can get a lot of data shifted quite quickly. So we've got, bit, we've got a bit of history, like I mentioned, there's a couple of hands in Texas that started and then they created some Linux custom software firmware, mostly for these Lexus devices like we have in the front here, sorry to my people. So they took these stock standard devices, Wi-Fi devices, and what they decided to do is, alright, we're going to write our own custom firmware. They uploaded it to the device, Put a high gain antenna onto it, like the one that we got here. And say, right, with our 70 or 50 or it's about a little bit what you get in these radios, we'll start pointing it to other nodes. The problem they ran into is it's point to point link, so it's one link to another link, and that's it. And that's where the custom firmware started coming in, where we can now have auto configuring networks. So we started out with this equipment, it's now being expanded to the big new range, and that is the future we are moving towards. Um, we're dropping, they're dropping support for Lexus devices, which is one of the problems. So around the place you'll see a couple of, a couple of the big new devices that we've just set up for the demonstration today. Right behind me in the corner there, we've got what they call the rocket, with the dual antennas. Uh, we have here with Rob, we've got what they call the nano station which has already got a flat panel integrated with the GBI antennas and down the back behind Cloudy we've got the PX web. So those are just a couple of stations we've quickly put up just to give you an idea of um, how they work. All these stations are running at extremely low power at present without any high power at the so, so don't worry about it. Right, um, you can read more on their website about the history, how it came about and to find a lot of information. They've got a forum as well there you can start asking questions. Um, if Rob and myself don't know the answers, we'll definitely be getting there and we'll find out some more information as well. But there is a, there's a good website to remember uh, and we'll show you all these links like the end as well. So a bit about the nodes, I'll talk about nodes. Node is pretty much a device like that rocket that's got a custom firmware on it, that's got antennas on it, in most cases, high gain antennas, because I mean, we're talking high frequencies here. High gain antennas, and by just putting these up in just a strategic positions, we're actually able to connect to this device. This device also gives you access to the network. So, um, similar to packet radio, where you turn on a, a packet modem with a radio, it becomes a node, you can bounce through it, or you can connect into the network from your hotspot computer. Similar, similar principle. 
um, which is called the high speed. We'll, we'll get to that part next. So that's a bit about the nodes. Now, when we start up a cell, we, we face the problem. How are we going to start identifying devices? Because each device can do different things. And uh, if you've got an egg grip, like the one behind the party, that's directional device, you're pointing it specifically into a direction. Well, I'm just going to know what device you're running. Now, can I come in from the side of it? No. <laughs> this is where we ran into a problem. So we started the microphone. Uh, putting this together to show what devices it was running. Now, we'll see it's dash B on the bullet device. And I'll show you what the, there's a couple of slides of identifying these devices. We've got the rockets with a dash R, that's the one we've got there. We've got an anchor, it's got a dash A. So you'll put your call sign in, and behind the call sign you'll either have a dash B, a dash R, a dash A, or a vanish station, a dash N, or a Nexus device, a dash L. If your node is connected via another means to another node, so some of these nodes are quite remote and we just don't have columns at the present. So this whole project is driven around the community project. So the hand community gets involved, we get all these nodes sticking up and it all connects, but we can have cells where there's not a connectivity between nodes. So how do we break that gap? Well, that's where we get what we call VPN, which is a virtual private network, a tunnel we can have through the internet that's secure, and it's a secure connection between nodes. Similar to like an Ecolink type system where you have a tunnel through the internet that carries the voice from one node to another node, similar type of idea. So that's where we have the VPN connected nodes to connect, say, the northern end of Balkan to the southern end of Balkan and we use the internet capability. As soon as all the nodes are up and running and we get more interest in this network, we can start dropping the VPN links or you can just run it as a uh, nice to have backbone and additional or a second route and shoot something happen with some of the links being between. Right. So currently, excuse this map, but so it didn't come out good that well. We started registering interest from individuals and said, look, we're interested in this network. We'd like to have a look. So we've got drop down here. The blue signifies stations that's currently up and running. So we've got drop down here. We've got Ian, A links up there. We've got myself up there, and we've got myself up there, which is currently running, operating on here. These yellow little balloons, so to speak, these are the guys that have shown in, shown interest. And I mean, you can see from there to there, we're going to have to have a VPN link somewhere along the line to start linking those guys up. We've also got guys down south in Sugar Lake. We've got Sugar Lake. is starting to play with it. Christchurch is playing with it. Napier is playing with it. We can link all these guys up with this network via VPN. So we can see their radios, we can go on their radio system and go and have a look. So we'll do the packet network system as it is today. Difference, this is high speed. So what do we do? These devices are all consumer devices. So it's something you go out, you buy it off the shelf, anybody can go and walk in and buy these devices. The difference is these devices are high power devices. And that's where regulations start coming in. We're operating currently for these devices for their big release. We've got the 921 here, we've got a big channel that you can set a device up for that. We're running 30 meg channels and 2.4 meg on channel 1 specifically. 3.3 specifically in red because they have not brought out the firmware for those devices. They are working on that. Each set of devices needs to get its own custom firmware and they're working on that set now. 5.16, but not as many meg as channel. I think we can get a 40 meg channel out of there as well, which will give us even more, more bandwidth to play with which could be uh, pretty good. With these radios, we're looking at about 150 meg per second on good links, slower links, we can go down to 20 meg per second. So we'll show you a slide on how the Americans compare that up against the next one. So this is straight from, from the guys in Texas, they did a bit of a quick comparison, and 
some of these networks we are not too familiar with, but um, anyway, so that's the. So we, this is the stuff we know. D star, I mean that's also relatively new to, to some people. We're talking at 0.128. Our capability, that was with a couple of old Linksys devices and 10 to 54, we now are up to 150. So you can see the difference. We were with amateur, uh, with active radio, backdoor, D star, that's where we are now today. So that is the future of high speed networks in amateur radio. Right, so they just compared it with the fiber optics home services, the DSL, and um, yeah, some other, other dial up speeds and so forth. So, I mean, we're not going to fucking dial up on quite a lot, so it's, it's pretty impressive. Anyway. So, the, the main thing with us setting up the nodes and getting the system up and running is we need to know what our limitations are. And with higher frequencies, as most of you might know, there's a lot of limitations, unfortunately. So, channels 1, 6, and 11, those are the only non overlapping channels. So that's the ones where we can get the maximum throughput on 2.4 gig. Channel 1 through to 6 is an amateur band. So you can see where I go with high power devices. General 7 to 11 are not, so we stay clear of those. Okay. You need a clear line of sight. Three does it doesn't tend to make it, but it's got stand with some other populations. Kills buildings, they do block, and I don't know why they're getting inside it. Big crowds, but all right, big crowds is a problem. So <laughs> probably for high, high RF levels. <laughs> The nice thing about this network, and that's what we did here tonight, um, we're having a bit of a battle with my little computer and not playing the game. Nice thing about this network, you turn that rocket on with the firmware that you flash. We supply it between Rob and myself, we get the, get the devices, we set the device up. All you need to do, if, if you do it yourself, is you need to load the firmware. Set up your call sign, set up a password, and turn it off. That's it. Stick it on the pole, turn it off. It'll automatically find the nearest node. It'll automatically say, here I am, connected, done, you're up. 60 seconds. That's what it does. You're up and run. Climbing the ladders for the Hey? Climbing the ladders for the moment. Yeah, climbing the ladder, the ladder it takes a bit longer to get it up there. But once you turn it on, 60 seconds, and then the red LED on it shows that there's another node and it's connected. You're up and running. Easy as that. So with these three nodes that's currently up, it was a matter of just plugging, switching on, it's already configured, it's up and running. So now for a portable station, I mean this is pretty much a quick portable setup we've done here. You can imagine going out to the rally and you want to go do all sorts of interesting stuff. You could have put these on the hilltop and uh, guys can have their laptops with them and so forth and they can start uh, displaying all sorts of things. So there's no manual configuration, it just shows up as soon as you turn it on for all the configures. And uh, that's the that's the other two things. It finds the shortest route. But I numerically see if I want to get from A to B, I need to jump like that through the other nodes to get there. It just finds it. That's all built into the background. I'm not going to get into that. That is something to discover once you get into the network. You start playing with all these things and you can start reprogramming and carry on. With that. So there's a lot, there's a big field for the IT guys as well as for the radio guys. That's, uh, there's a lot to learn with this. So, what's the problem? Oh, yes, the broken roads as well. As soon as a node drops out, if there's other nodes in the area that automatically reconfigures itself. It already knows, it creates a whole map of all the nodes that surrounding and the links that that have, so that you make your reconfigures. It's a pretty amazing stuff. So what, what shall we do with this network? Where are we going with this? We're putting up all these nodes and they're running. What do you want to do with it? Well, what would you like to do with it? That is the, that's the question. Now I see these ARC guys already know that they're not even here. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to send emails to one another? Do you want to run 
a set of a uh, station there's a tsunami coming, let's set up a station on the beach or a wave again, and we can see as, as it increases we can monitor from the remote station. You can, you can show the uh, civil defense or response guys on here, you can show them live pictures of what's happening out there with this network. That's just one of them. We can create our own telephone system. You can use WhatsApp or IP Cisco uh, telephones. Um, there's a custom file that we have that you just load onto these devices, plug it into the, the end of this um, system. Once again, it auto configures itself, off you go. That's it. You can phone somebody else on a physical telephone via this network. We can uh, send videos. I've got an example there for the web camera just to give you an idea. Um, running it really slow at only one uh, frame per second, which was my little raspberry pi is a bit slow. It was We've got email servers we can set up, we've got an IRC chat servers that, that Rob will show you, we can physically have send chat messages around and it's, that's where it's going. IRC, and again, like I said, what do you want to do with the network? It's like a LAN network that has all computers network that you can send files, you can do all these things, share files. Right, so what do you need to keep going? Um, briefly covered. At present, we are on broadband and the version 3 firmware. So you would require an ubiquity radio device or a Linksys device. Um, like I mentioned, the Linksys will not be supported past version 3. You cannot link a node with version 2 with a node with version 3. It's got a different setup and it just doesn't work. So everybody needs to be on the same spec for the system to work. You require your antennas, and in some cases I call it, they call it pigtails for connecting your antennas to your radios. You need a LAN cable, you need a power of an Ethernet device, because we're putting these radios right at the antenna, so we don't lose any, um, there's no losses. It is vital that um, we send the power up to the device to then power it right up. So everything is mounted on the pole, like you can see with the device has got the power back there. The physical head is the device, and the cable is carrying the power up to it. So that is the radio that's in that head, mounted in the, uh, the head of the head. Um, the rockets are a bit different, um, the same story with the uh, nanos. It's that device is the radio that's everything, so there's no loss of strength connected to the antenna. It's up and down. You need to give it power. And uh, if you want to talk to it, you need an internet connection back to your computer. And, you know, video name capable switch if you want to go to um, and connect up with other devices via the VPN tunnel. That is what you're going to look at. You're going to need to buy a switch, which is not that expensive, to add to your internet system so we can go into the tunnel. And obviously, you need another node in your area. At this point in time, we're just sticking nodes up in the hope that there's more people that come onto the network so we can start um, building the network from there. There's, there's two ways you can go about building these networks, and that's what they found in the States. You can either work in a community center where everybody goes out, buys the equipment, turns it on, sticks it up, and leave it up there for the time being. Somebody else comes along and says, We wonder what that broadband handling Wi Fi signal is on detecting. I'll go and try that out. Not a hand, stick it up, off you go, you've got a network. And so the network grows. The other way of doing it is building a, a backbone. Now when we start talking about backbones and it's stations running at specific clubs, you're going to start looking at licensing issues. Now that's something we still need to discuss and see where we're heading if we want to go that route. But running at a clubhouse is, uh, I would imagine, similar to packet radio where you need a, a station license for that, we will still investigate all of that. And then, um, yeah, from there, you stick these with a backbone up, you connect clubs to one another with a 3.3 gig backbone, which um, is exclusive access for us. You get to high speed through that, and from there, we tee off 2.4 to 5.5 gig access points to the to the users around the world. So that is another approach that you could do to, to um, create a super high with a piece of background. Okay, 
So why haven't we gone with these effective devices? Well, I'm already Dr. Q. Lynx is not going to be supported anymore. Past uh, broadband um, and net version 3. We're running out of memory on the Linksys. Currently, we're setting up a 2.9 meg file. I think it's only got a 4 meg um, internal memory that can flash onto it. We're running out of memory. With the effective devices, we go up to 32 meg. So we've got enough space for future enhancements and advancements and all sorts of stuff. If you want to build stuff in yourself, go for it. Program it in and you can add if you're professional with hardware development or software for hardware, um, develop it for firmware and add it into it. She goes. So that pretty much covers most of that. Um, and yes, I'm going to mention we're using plug and play on the shop series devices to make it easy. Get it up, get it money. Right, so there's a couple of the devices we've introduced you already to the e-grip down the back. The nano station up front here, the rocket, and the bullet. Now that's got an end type connector, and uh, pretty much all that uh, does is the long antenna, which I think is on our next slide. Go to the next slide. There's our antenna. So we have an omni, it's got an end type down the bottom, and with our rocket, physically just screws into this. Oh, sorry, the bullet. The bullet's got another end type that just screws into this, and um, off you go. Put an Ethernet cable down the bottom, mount that on your pole, and your load is up and running. That's all you need. Right, so we're all in the same frequency band, by the way. Yeah, we all run it going here on people. 2.4 gig, yes, um, 5 gig, there's a bit of an issue with um, the vector has changed something in their serial numbers or something with their devices, so we, we've got a bit of an issue with some of the devices are hitting this, we can load the firmware and some we can, so it's a bit of a, that's why we're sort of staying clear until they figured out what's happening on that side. It's, it's in development, uh, it started, uh, this network's been going for close on 10 years, but the vector was only added, what, three years ago? Yeah, so it's, well, let's call it three years ago that Beckery was put in place. So within the next year or two, we'll definitely see uh, you know, more devices supported as well. Yeah. And I have a question too. If you go to some other flight for the Yeah. What sort of problem do you have with this company like Strathmore? Because they have so put up to the zero with them. Yeah. That, that'll be generating more noise as well, but at least the noise they generate is probably less than the, the normal router around your neighborhood. I've got about 100, 100 different um, routers I can hear just on this. The nice thing about modern technology is the new routers, when they hear that they can't get a, a, a proper signal through, they scoot off to another channel. So I've been doing some experiments on high power. These guys run 800 milliwatts. So if you stick that into 19 dBi, you do max. Ah, uh, over 600 watts PV living in the So, they scoot off quite quickly when you start putting that sort of power into the <laughs> Okay then, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, even my little routes are like, look, channel 30 might be a better place to go live. So, <laughs> so yes, they, they scoot off quite quickly. So here's some of the uh, installations of guys in the US here. We've got a uh, nano station up there. You can see the LEDs or the red LED on. Uh, pointing to different nodes, like site monitoring or like site stuff. Um, the guys out from the field day, they have the Linksys device with an Omni antenna up there to uh, create what they call a drop box in the States. So uh, what they do with a drop box is pretty much take one of these, put them in a uh, enclosure it's waterproof with an antenna like that or an omnidirectional antenna. And they take this and they stick it up on the pole and there it goes, it just stands there and it finds its own network and it just goes on. So these are contact details, we'll leave that slide on and bring it up later again if you uh, want to get in touch and uh, interested in knowing more about the network, where to go next, how to get going with us. And, um, We'd like to get more people interested, obviously, as a community network to get the network out of the From an ARC point of view, 
this could be quite an, uh, a good network to have and uh, a good capability. I mean, even with the rallies and all that, you can um, have quite a decent uh, setup. So, uh, sorry. I thought you had a bit of a setup. That's all right, we'll come. We'll come to our regular meeting. We'll come to Yeah, so we've got a WhatsApp group, Yahoo group, the link to it. I know it's a long link, you can go and look at angry as well if you want to get in touch with us. It's a Yahoo group. Um, I'd recommend if you're interested in this, um, even if you just want to investigate it, have a look, register with a group, and um, come and have a chat with us. Send an email out, ask some questions, see what other nodes are in your area. We have got a web page up as well. I should put it on here. I think it's on the next slide, page. We currently have a web page running as well, which is this web page is still in development. So um, yeah, be with us. But you can go and find a lot of information, a lot of frequently asked questions from uh, individuals, and that is on the edmesh.wordpress.com. Like I mentioned before, your firmware downloads and your mesh information, you can go and have a look at broadband at the and um, there's a really comprehensive user documentation. And they also say on the website, like, right, I've got this network, I've got it up and running, what next? We don't go to from What do we want to do? Whatever. And it's, it's an amazing network to use. The, uh, the future, I would say, of back of radio because essentially it is for a back of radio system. Yes. Is that the third version of Linux? No, the operating system on the devices is a Linux or a Unix type operating system. Once that is loaded, you can connect a Windows computer to it, you can connect a Mac to it, you can connect a, a Linux machine to it. You can connect an Android machine if you have a, a NAND or an Ethernet adapter. You can connect any device to it. Any IP-based device. Any IP-based device. So as long as it can go up to the internet, it's got a web browser on it, it's got an Ethernet connection, you plug it in and, 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 and we'll show you a demo on these devices, how we connect to them, how we go through devices and hop from one link to another. Okay, so these are some of the nodes the guys put up. This is like the Dropbox I mentioned where they have set up um, a Omni and a directional. The nice idea, the nice thing about this setup is if I have a node on the other side that I want to connect to that I can see, I can point to that one. However, somebody from behind or on, on the side of me can go on, on, on my own, so they can point to my own direction. And so you can form the network. Um, and one, one access point to one node can take multiple nodes. That's, uh, I think it's that's set on the website somewhere. Yeah. It's like 108 or 112 nodes that can connect to one node, no problem. So it's, uh, it takes a lot of time. The other thing is the universal vector. You can type them in an attention map and plug it into the switch. So switch. If you receive something like this one, you can swap it out to that one and talk about the entry and not by RF, so it won't blast itself out. So it's safe to go from that one. So repeat them, yeah. Okay. Repeat them like IP. So, yeah. so that's why the need we're repeating. I mean, okay. it's the directional antenna as well as often polarized yep. on the only piece we need. Yes, so why they did that for the horizontal is when you start getting interference from your local ISM devices and you can't get them to scoot off, then you must be stuck going for that. It just provides a bit more isolation. The problem is when you want to link this, your vertical engineers where the issue starts. So for point-to-point -point link, they are dual polarity, so they can connect whichever way to another nano station, preferably in the states they're getting between those little billboards, uh, which is only running 500 millibots. Yep. yep. Um, and it's currently running on 10 millibots, but uh, I'm not lost here. <laughs> <laughs> it's only running on 10 millibots. So those devices, they get 13 miles roughly what, 3 kilometers between two of those devices that can see one another, but you need to physically see it. There's no trees, no nothing. You can see the other device. 3 kilometers, no problem. Right, interesting, this is a, quite an interesting event that the guys in the state had. They had this command center that was set up, 
can I have a right check there on the VA check? Um, it was part of a uh, event, I can't remember the exact event, but it was like a, um, like, um, uh, I think it was a, it was one of the cycle race or something like that, that they set the station up. And with these guys, they had some of the event coordinators. And these event coordinators had an Excel spreadsheet that they ran this whole event off, where if somebody passes them, they quickly type it and save the file, and somebody on the other side, with an internet connection, opens it up. Being in the stacks, their uh, 3G connection didn't quite work as well. And these guys jumped to, to the rescue and said, don't worry, still put up a portable mode. They put a portable mode up, they routed the internet through it, plugged it into their laptop and said, right, there you go, this is a file. Done. So they got a guy on the other side with his mesh at home to connect them up to the internet. <coughs> and there you go, they've made them their file. So we can route these sorts of things in emergencies. Uh, I'm sure they will be quite a lot upset about internet over amateur radio networks, but there is a possibility in an emergency we could do it. It is the capability. Like I said, whatever you can put your mind to with IP, we can do it. So that's the last one. So another one Texas with a start of this war. So I thought it was quite unique that they've got to run in some desert, which is a presumed you not have too many people inside of the zoo. And so they to monitor what people are doing, they can see that sort of things that was about the day before stuck up on these measures and took a hill with an IP camera and then they had to slash it back home and they'd see people coming past they could slash it on to get on the track with the IP camera in real time without actually having someone on the site so they not the price. So to give you an example I've set up a webcam, like I said, my little um, Raspberry Pi is a bit slow, so I have to go down on the frame size, unfortunately. There's the webcam running at one frame per second as we speak through the whole way. So it's connected, it's behind the to the Raspberry Pi, the webcam, you can see the little LED just above his head, the green LED. That goes to that load above his head, it connects through to the this node here, and it comes to the back. And there you can see it. Uh, if they can time is totally incorrect, so you can see it's slow, but one frame is it. The speed of which one goes. How is that how it So, uh, I, I, I deliberately put it in one frame a second, one can speed it up, and um, you can set it to a higher high frame rate. Right? Unfortunately, with red games, it's quite um, process intensive. The software that I'm running on the Raspberry Pi at present is what they call motion. Some people might be familiar with that. They actually use it in home um, security type systems where you can put a block around the wall and say, right, if that moves, I want to know that. So if that moves, then stupidly you get an email or a picture, you know. It moves. Maybe it's not dead yet. Fair enough. So um, that is our way. On that same Raspberry Pi, I've set up the Apache web server. So this is an enclosed network, it's got nothing, it's not connected to the internet at present. This network is not connected. So we've set up a web server, and if you log now and navigate to that specific address, um, then you can just, you know, just go to uh, mm -hmm. HTTP file all the way back. So that is, that is now into Rob's node. So he's into the nano device. From there, he's going to jump over to either that network or that network, whichever flies the shortest. When you look at the mesh status page, before you go online, you can see all the advertised networks. So, we've got the web camera, which is like that, which is a web service. When you click on it, it opens a page, there you go, that's the web camera room. I created an internet web server, so we can just have a look and have, have a really basic website that I just put on there just to show you the speed of, at which the web page can be. Now that web page, each page is about 50 odd k's with a couple of pictures that you've already seen, just to show you how to do that. So we've got ourselves no running down the back end at um, Ingrid. That's it on there. We've got tl one lw which is the rocket down the back, and an A for the Ingrid. So it's an F and that should be the Ingrid. That's the one. That's the one hiding in the back room. Ah, oh, is that the one hiding in the back room? See, I totally forgot about it. There's another node down the back room. It's also talking to us. 
The next one is an IRC chat server for people that are running the editing. That is where you can send messages to other people that's going to be doing the network. Which um, on the back of the radio side of things, we've also got chat servers with a similar idea. This is just bugs. <laughs> right, so when we go to the to the uh, internet web server, there you go. That's how quickly it loaded to 40, 40 kilobytes. Done. So you can go to a node or do a photo gallery on the node map. That, is, that picture in itself is from 400 kilobytes. Okay. Okay. Photo gallery. These are not the guys with IP camera and camera cam setups, with other patients and so forth. Quite an interesting story on that as well. We, the guys said, look, I've got all this stuff on this 55 foot tower and I can't see where I'm pointing. So he decided to put an IP camera on the, on the back of his device so he can look at it down on his computer and turn the rotator and go, oh, yep, 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 yep. Now I'm pointing in the right direction. <laughs> 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 so he uses it for something different, but that's why he's got the Omni on there as well for other nodes to communicate. Another um, deploying of a mesh node for um, like rallies or um, these sorts of things. I think that's a nice tower in the market state where he's actually got a London Gunner station. So that's just the website, and if you click on the contacts us page, it's just another small little thing. There it is. That's how quick the network is. That's fine. The well, internet at home is probably not even that fast. Except if you've got a file that <laughs> Different story. So, just to give you an idea, I mean, that's just running on the actual, uh, on the Raspberry Pi, which I've only got a second name, we're going to display some slides. So, so right, so from the chat point of view, Rob set up an IRC chat server in the back room here on the Raspberry Pi, running off uh, on, a, on a node connected to this whole setup once again. Hello everyone, there you go. Rob just sent it out. And um, Yeah, so we've got the IRC chat server that's running on the Raspberry Pi as well. We, we can, um, I mean, just run the, the help file here. Yeah. So just to give you an idea, this is now running from this station to the next station, getting all the information coming back from there. That's good. So, it's still packet ready. Still packets being shifted over ready. Just high speed. The only problem with these networks is it's a community thing. We need people to get involved, stick their hand up and say, look, I want to put a node up, pick the node up and run it, so we can get more interest going. Now currently on the shore it's, it's we've got really good community of guys that's put their hand up uh, to date. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, please guys, come and see us. We'd like to get this going. Um, you might ask what's my motives or whatever behind this network. I want to play radio. That's it. I mean, imagine from an AOC point of view. Julian, how can you record this? What can you not do with it? I mean, you can link all, you can link all, the, all the centers you can link together. When all other networks have failed, we can link those centers together. These devices run off a little set anchor of entry. With a, uh, it's only concealed, it's 24 volt that goes to the, to the physical the device. Most of them, it's a one in power supply, so it's a smaller power supply. They, uh, they can see so little power. You can take a 7 amp power battery, you stick it in there, and um, off you go. Guys in the States, they get up to two days on one battery. Nice and the solar panel battery. Yeah, solar panel battery. Mm -hmm. Around the station, yeah, go from the station. Yeah. So you just walk from hilltop to hilltop, you'll have a station here, thank you, another hilltop bike right? will have a station here, we can see that station. And that's it, as long as you've got all your hilltops covered, if you're down in the depths, you can see the hilltop, it will connect with that one. So we haven't set up an email server that's a bit more uh, extensive to set up. 
I'll show you how we can bounce emails through the whole network. But yeah, that's all that is currently set up. And um, just to give you a bit of an idea how things are shipping. I can, we can kill one of the networks if we want to see how we can bring it back up. Um, so if you uh, just go back to the, we'll, we'll go back to the um, local node. The node that you connected to, you connected by the, by the local node oh, for that area. We've got this, what they call the OSR demon. And that is what does all that intelligent network crafting in the background. So there's a whole map of all, of all the IP addresses that we are sitting on. You can see ZL1, 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 So that's your, your thing, thing uh, going on. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, that does a, that pretty much does a thing where you send it back to the data to that time, you wait for it to come back and you see how long it took to measure the time. And by doing that, you can see which route is the quickest route. And this is what this OSI does, is it looks for the quickest route, puts it on the top and says, hey, this is the top. Well, it puts it on for that specific device. So when you look at this, if we kill one device, is that acting like a DNS server so sort of backfill that will do it easy? No, not do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's going to be DNS server. So, so that's doing the DNS. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be DNS server. So I've killed the, the rocket. So the ZL1 LW dish actually disappear once we go back to the mesh status. Now the rocket is still showing up, it's probably going to disappear at that. There, it's slowly disappearing. It's it's really I can't find it. I can't find it. It's it's there. It's <laughs> and it's degrading. It takes a while on this page to um, actually refresh. There it's it's a big it has an antenna for it. there. I think, oh, 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 hang on a bit. Maybe I uh, can't write. Can't communicate with it. And now it's gone. It's gone. So, leaving it there, once I bring it up, you can see that the red LED will come up once the device is up on the liquid. It's powering up. It starts flashing, it's starting to do uh, its initialization. So that's pretty much what you'll have on the spike of it does its initialization and takes about 60 seconds to come up. Yeah, yeah. Page refresh and there it shows you the previous neighbor. Somebody that saw that's not current, the current neighbor. There it is, the So that station was there a moment ago. The other side there's remote mode, so that was on the edge, you can't see directly. You can see why another mode. So these other nodes, like you said, can see one another. We don't have a node that we can't see it. Mine is the part that it happened. Right, so if we refresh the page, Sorry, sorry. Give, it a, give it a while, is it up and running yet? Have got a red yeah. LED? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there you saw the red LED came on and it started up and now it's busy slowly upgrading at 6%, 8%, and so forth. We'll start picking it up. It's now busy doing that background routing and doing all the things and seeing where, uh, where it fits into the network. There you go. Now, to, to hop between nodes, we're currently in, in two nodes, so this is the, the node we're currently sitting in, which is connected to Rob's computer. All he needs to do is double click on ZL1 and ZL1 and chain. There is in the web page that is running on the node standing down the back. If he goes to the status, you can see what that node is saying. That node, it's got the IRC chat on it, you can see all these services. So now he's jumping from there to that node, and then he can jump back to the web server behind the line, going to the internet web server. So you can see how that device experiences the internet web server. There's also the setup side of things where we can, uh, if 
administer um, administrators network. You can set up your, like I mentioned to you, this is where you set up your call type with what type of load it is. You set up your password, username and password. You can set up all our LAN configurations. Do not change the SSIDs, that means to stay as version 3. The network uses that and it depends on the specific setting, the specific text to look for the network. It also advertises itself as a um, ad hoc network. We're running a 30 meg wide channel and we're currently fixed in channel 1. On the LAN side of things, that's connected to the um, to the Raspberry Pi on that side, on the core of this device. The Raspberry Pi is currently sitting on, uh, I think, the other page will show that, but you can connect five direct hosts and it runs a DHCP server starting at a start interface of that, end interface of that, and you can also do it as a natural as well. So there's all sorts of things you can configure if, uh, for the guys that's more into the IT side of things. You can have a play. Here we set up our port forwarding and services. So you've got a device or router uh, or a device up. You want to route the traffic to whatever you connect to. On that device, you set up a port. And on that port, you open this port on our radio to access the Raspberry Pi. So the port on the Raspberry Pi. And this is what we pretty much done here. That is the Raspberry Pi. That's the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. That's its MAC address. We want to call it IRC when you look at the main web screen to be able to see what other advertised services, other devices that people have on their devices. It is at a URL, IRC, global, wake, wake. So when you put that address in the top bar of your um, web, web browser, it will go to the IRC channel on that port, triple six seven. So you can essentially open port 6667 to connect to the Raspberry Pi. On the Raspberry Pi, you would do it in your config file on the IRC chat that is called 667 and it's listen out for, and once that comes in, it will automatically uh, forward it to the right. Someone's also in my head is that on the side of it, it tell them why that's why that's not the thing that's why they actually have a copy of the name. So anyone with a management type can do it. So why that's why and I'll get a response from So. So like, like Robert's saying, he's currently, on this setup, he's currently connected to, to that network. From the nano station, all he needs to do is open a new web browser window. Sorry, Robert. Close it. Yeah. Open a new web browser window. And to connect directly to the little web server we have down the back there, you just go HTTP, call it back back. Broadband dash handling is what it's called the service. Enter. Ah, uh, sorry, it's not the service. Uh, HTTP tunnel record. Broadband handling. Broadband minus handling. Yep. Enter. There it is. There's our web page just loaded with it. Right there. So, we bounce from this device to that device back to our website. Right, any questions? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> One application that comes to mind, I already see an action where you're currently purchasing and installing digital mobile radio repeaters around the country for ARUC repeaters. Um, I have them work effectively, they need an internet connection. One of the challenges at Alton at the moment is to find a site that will give these are on UHF, mm -hmm. on um, One of the challenges at Alton at the moment is to find the site which gives good coverage of the CBD. So you, you get good UHF coverage, uh, it also has internet access all across the land of the league. Has anything been done anywhere in the States with interfacing or broadband handling to... Very, very easy. To... He's got internet on that. Radio, 
Yeah, I think he's got it clean on that. Right. The is capable of, I mean, there's D-Star obviously is one, but D-Star is slow. Yeah, D-Star is slow. Compared to this, you... So, so, it would essentially be a uh, voice over engine. So, yeah. like that, that is my so, all we need here is we need to keep the beam around the, the uh, brown capable of the beam and uh, the beam land taking, which is what they use as a micro pixel device. So, up like that. Yeah. We flip the mesh gateway tick, which means it becomes a connected network between whatever else network you've got, particularly your local network in your house, and this network. Mm-hmm. Because essentially the mesh system is a network. Yes. And there's a Wi-Fi network that connects to one another. Um, that's where it's different to consumer, normal consumer devices. Normal consumer devices, you can only connect a device to the network. You can yes. only connect devices to one another. What we're doing here is we essentially have multiple devices that all connect to one another. But it can also connect to them. Mm-hmm. So, so the fact that I would go to my hand and have a at the moment we don't want to fight at all to go and stop So in theory, if someone has to mesh in one of them, they don't want to and they haven't got any sense they can mesh to one of them, they don't want to be And you want to restrict it to sort of fight so from a commercial point of view, you can do the guys does that already. Uh, however, licensing is an issue. Because you need the license on the side. But in that situation, I'll get if you wanted to then make it that certain thing to get access, but you don't port forward. Yeah, you pretty much do a forward to that specific personal or service, so nobody else can use it. So that will have a sense of yeah. access. So from, from our administration point of view, between Rob and myself, we administrate the Houston Point Australia South and obviously the North Park of the as well, so I'm doing a bit of North administration trying to get things up and running. Um, we can lock in all these networks and stuff that's running and services so that we can... I mean, it's like a like amateur radio repeater, when you start talking on a repeater and um, so on used for what its purposes and intent, then um, you know you have people that's responsible and that kind of thing. So from an administration point of view, we can see what data is running on the network and say, hey, we don't have to do that, not good. I mean there's nothing that's a service that's a consumer there's nothing you stop the box in the shop and find things as a device that should be in reality is you see pop up on the network and say the other people have to go back to this so it's not a device that's it, we block we can block that device as easy as that. The, the thing is, with as the laws currently stand, you can run this device, not a problem. As long as you do not transmit more than one what you EIRP, you can run it, no problem. Anybody can run it. So you can take the standard device with the standard containers, you're well within the legal limits, you can run it. As soon as I put the 90 dB on a grid on 73 milliwatts, we're going to run it. Right now, on the road. That's where really that, that, the hand portion being channel 1, when we say 1, 2 to 6, that's where really, we stick to the channel 1. We are well within our rights to run the type of power that we are when we are transferring up and getting out of the world. Germany, there is a community in which runs the standard equipment, but it means that a lot of us are going to be following the box and that's the So I've got some of the equipment here, if the guys want to have a little look at the field. If you've got any more questions, please shoot away. Um, I'll take one more question at the end, otherwise we'll uh, thank you for your time and uh, have more questions. Well, thank you, Dennis. Thank you for having us tonight. And, uh, thank you for that enlightening presentation. And, uh,
Thank <laughs> you.